It's the Richie and Kapuna Show. With me, Heather Barton. Hello, and welcome back to the Richie and Apuna Show. Sorry we were on vacation for two weeks, but upon return, we have learned that there has been a complaint made to the Philly Cam Station about the profanity that we use and the content of our show. Richie and I would like to take this time to apologize to our viewers that enjoy vulgar language and sexual innuendos, and for this jackass taking up any of our time. Now, to the bitch with the stick up her ass, thanks for watching our show and for taking the time to call the station. Like us or hate us, you're still talking about us. Oh, and by the way, it's one button, bitch. It goes up or down. There was an article on the Philadelphia Neighborhood's website about trash in Kensington. Where? Heather moved out. i never seen that. It litters the ground, gets into the water and streets, and makes the area appear dirty. The residents of Kensington have shown their anger about having trash cans in front of their houses and getting fined for it. Terrence Jackson, a resident of Kensington, said, I would much rather see trash cans on the sidewalk than trash on the sidewalks. The fines keep the streets of Kensington dirty because people wouldn't litter as much if trash cans were out. Tom Potts from the new Kensington Community Development Corporation said that the cops only ticket areas in Kensington because they know the people will pay. True. Kensington's trash problem seems to be far from solved. Over a week ago, a four-year-old boy was shot in the head and died as a result. Family members say he accidentally shot himself with a gun that was left laying around the house. The cops didn't find a gun, but obviously the kid didn't get rid of it. I mean, where'd it go? Police think someone tried to discard the weapon. No shit. They have looked under cars and brought in canine units, but couldn't find it. They did find some additional ballistic evidence inside the property, but couldn't comment on the specifics of it. Police say the father and mother, along with others, were in the house at the time at the 600 block of Clementine Street when the shooting happened. The child's grandfather was blaming the boy's father, saying that he left the gun out in the open where the kid could get it. It's hard to shoot a gun. How'd a four-year-old little boy shoot it? And many people in Philly have willingly given up their privilege to drive. Nearly a third of all households in the city don't have a vehicle, according to the Census Bureau's American Community Survey. Only about 60% of city residents get to their jobs with a car, according to the census data. A quarter of Philadelphians use public transit and nearly 9% walk to work, figures that are among the highest in the country. Philly is among the most expensive places in the country to own a car. Besides the everyday costs such as gas, maintenance, parking, Philly car owners are also burdened with the third highest car insurance rate in the nation, not to mention parking authority. In right. Florida. Behind New Orleans and Detroit, with an average of annual of 3469 for the premium, according to Runsheimer International, a firm that handles business travel and employee relocation. But do you think most people in Philly even have insurance? They have to now. I mean, I doubt it. Yeah, you're right. You know, that's why it costs more for the people that actually pay for insurance. That's not true. They charge you more because... Why? Because they're not getting the money from the people that aren't paying. Well, how much money are they supposed to get? They're not making their quota? I don't understand that. How... It's greed. Every company does that. So the because, gas company even does that. They, they charge have... you extra for the people that aren't paying. It ain't because people don't have insurance, so. Well, what's it? why is it? I don't fucking know. It ain't because of that. You just like to argue about I everything, do. and you're wrong. Uh-huh. Oh, did you hear about the new Budweiser beer that's coming out? They just trademarked the 215 beer? No. You didn't hear about that? Nope. Would you buy it? No. Why? Because I don't drink regular beer. What do you drink? Light beer. Oh my God. So what if it's a light beer then? Well, is it a light beer? I don't know. I didn't really... Well, I don't know if I would drink it then. Just because it's 215 and you're in the 215 area. No, I wouldn't fucking drink it just because of that. I don't drink Kensinger beer because I don't like it. What if it was only $5 a case? I wouldn't care. I still would pay $3 a bottle. It. Send me a case for free. I'll try it. Let you know. Take Back Your Neighborhoods is a grassroots organization started by Jared Solomon, a former resident of Northeast Philadelphia. The main goal of the organization is to get back the neighborhood local residents once loved. The organization not only works 
to bring neighbors together, but also to tackle issues including illicit drug activity, trash on the sidewalks, noise violations, landlord and rent issues, and vacant properties. Maybe the, they're allowed to have trash cans on their sidewalk. The there. organization has grown from four members at its first meeting about a year ago to 30 at its last meeting, and they would like to expand to people in the entire Northeast Philly region. The group plans to hold a Celebrate the Northeast Community Day on August 28th to generate more publicity, and there will be free food. Meetings are held the third Monday of every month at the Max Myers Rec at 1601 Hellerman Street. For more information, contact Jared Solomon at jaredsolomon at gmail.com. Free food. Should all go. Everybody should go. All the Kenzo should go. I remember this used to be about Kensington, this show. There is finally an official date set for the Slut Walk. Did you hear about that? No, I didn't. It's the Slut Walk Philadelphia March and Rally Demonstration against victim blaming and slut slamming. Slut slamming? No. Slut shaming. Slut slamming. Slut, slut slamming. That was a game on Howard Stern, I think. A person's appearance is not the cause of sexual assault. It will take place on Saturday, August 6th. The first Slut Walk was held in Toronto. And now Toronto we're following. No, Canada. We are taught don't get raped instead of don't rape. The goal of the Slut Walk Philadelphia is to raise awareness so that we start dialogues with one another about in ways in which our society perpetuates a culture that blames and shames the victim. And that is true. That's why so many women don't come true. forward because they, they true. feel like true. they deserve it. it. Well, you would never have to worry about getting raped, that's for sure. You're such an asshole. You're going to this thing anyway with me. I'm going. You're going. This isn't just a woman's issue, nor is it just a man's issue. It's everyone's issue, people. Slut Walk brings the issue out into the open. Now conversations begin and lead to education. Everyone will gather at Com Park at 11th and Pine. Step off time is 11 a.m. Walk, roll, holler, stomp with us as we travel from 11th to Spruce. 11th and Spruce? To Spruce. Um, from 11th from to 11th Spruce. to Spruce to Dilworth Plaza, where there will be several events, and I'm sure it's going to be crazy fun. Be lap, so, is there going to be lap dances? Dress stuff? like me and head on down. <laughs> will there be? Yeah. Crazy stuff going on that day. August 6th. Don't forget. There's a new pastor at St. Anne's Church. Father Brady, a former pastor of St. Isidore's Parish in Quakertown, has arrived in Kensington. What was he thinking? Coming from Quakertown to Kensington. The story of the IrishPhiladelphia.com stated that all parishioners will have to learn the hymn, Our Lady of Knock. Do you know that one? Knock and Boots? No, it's a hymn. It's a hymn? Not a her. Lady of Knock is a hymn? Yeah. How can lady be hymn? It's a hymn, like a song. A hymnal? <laughs> Tell we never went to church. It pays tribute to the Blessed Mother who, report, who reportedly appeared to a group of people in Knock County, Mayo, Ireland in 1979, which is a staple wherever the Irish in the Philadelphia region gather. Where I never heard of it. In Ireland? Yeah. So it was at Kensington. He came to Kensington, jackass. Well, how did he get to Ireland? He wasn't in Ireland. He was he from Quakertown. He was in Quakertown. Right. And he so just came here. From Ireland. Yeah. No, from Quaker Town. <laughs> so Heather, you have a cert. Uh, you do. You have a safety alert this week. Yeah. Wow. And this is serious. I can't too. wait to hear this. It's about kids in pools. They drown. Yeah. Drowning is the second Glad leading cause of death of children. Ninety percent of the drownings that occur in the United States happen when the child is supposed to be supervised. A child can drown, and this is scary, between twenty and sixty seconds. So, so just smoke think. your cigarettes faster. No, it takes me like five minutes to smoke a cigarette. Well, that's what I'm saying. You smoke them faster. That's not faster. 20 to 60 seconds they can drown. Well, faster to smoke a cigarette if you smoke it in five minutes would be between 20 and 60 so seconds. So they drown faster. That's not what you said. You said it would I be faster smoke to your, smoke a cigarette. No, I said smoke your cigarette faster. That's what I said. Oh, like if you're smoking Rewind a cigarette, you can't, you can't watch a kid? That's not why. Most people are probably on a cell phone, computer, Smoking their cigarette talking, on Facebook. Right, you're right. Ba sunbathing. Just like mommy does, Arguing. Right? Just like mommy does all the time. Yeah. 
Facebook, I'm cigarette, after. phone. Never, not when she's in the pool. Drowning. <laughs> anyway. Splashing. Help. They don't splash or scream a lot of the time, so you won't even notice it. It's very calm, quick, and quiet death. So please keep a, col a close eye. That's peaceful side. to know. I'm, I'm at peace right now. No, so what I'm saying is don't walk away and leave your and kid in a blur, pool. Blur, blur, blur. Blur, blur, blur. Yes. That's it. Yeah. Oh, God, I wish you could. Wow. Well, the reason is because they don't have a lot of oxygen in their lungs like we do. And you probably don't either. Want to go swimming after this? Come on. Yeah, I'm fucking sweating at that. I could see, see that. that. So I'm swimming in my sweat. This is just not working today. This is Heather's health alert. Health it alert. is a health alert. Safety slash. Not that you would know anything health about alert. health. So just keep an eye on your kids this summer in the pool. Even if you think your kid can swim or if it's only a little pool, kids can drown in a bucket of water. So please don't leave them alone for one second or be preoccupied with, you know, the phone or computer or whatever. And for get your kids some swimming lessons. Alcohol. There's many public pools drugs. in the city that have... Uh, Swimming lessons for kids. Do they? Yeah. This is a horrible tragedy that can be prevented. It is a horrible so. tragedy. Even though he's an asshole. It's a tragedy. Let's go swimming. Now for a wackadoodle news? Mm hmm. Wow, what the fuck is that? You don't know what that means? Yeah, I know. I, I didn't know that. what it was. What is it? Weird news. So, oh, wackadoodle weird news. Yeah. From Ireland? No. You need to stop smoking. Last week in Clifton Heights, Pennsylvania, a 63-year-old grandmother was pissed at her 9-year-old grandson because he ate too much bacon at breakfast and didn't leave enough for everyone else. Police say she allegedly, she allegedly assaulted the boy, knocking him to the ground. Give me that fucking bacon! Witnesses report that the woman pinned him down, beat him on the legs, and blasted him in the face with a hose. He did not require medical attention, though, so he's all right. Yeah. And she was held on $25,000 bail. But I agree with this because really? I love bacon. And if one of the kids eat all the bacon and Lego I go back and there's not, I'd be pissed thing. too. I would beat the shit out of Do that Do you remember kid. the commercial, the big fat mother and the kids eating a bowl of shit and mom walks in and goes, no, mommy, this is mine. Yeah. Remember that? That's, That's how I want my bacon. Shame. It's my kids. I love bacon. I eat it every day. I love it. Don't eat my bacon. I would do more than squirt them in the face with a hose. In Bangor, Maine, police brought charges against a homeless man who plugged Where's in a pair Bangor of cell phones. Where's Bangor, Maine? I don't fucking know. It's in Maine, up there. That's Bangor. <laughs> Bangor. Is it Bangor? Yeah. I like Bangor. Is it Bangor? Ha ha! Ha ha! Does he know? He's sitting there pushing a button. He's a college-educated student. What the fuck? It's, well, his parents are wasting anyway. their money. Ha ha! I'm right as usual. Well, they, they char put charges against the homeless man who plugged in a pair of cell phones into an outdoor outlet. Cop what was the fuck is a down... homeless man doing with two cell phones? I know. Like one. But why aren't you allowed to use an outdoor outlet? It's outdoors. It's, you're stealing. How's that stealing? That's stealing from the city. It's just an outlet. How much money could that possibly cost to if plug in a cell If you steal a penny, you stole. If it's outside, it's not stealing. Why not? Because it's on the ground. Your car's outside. I can't just take it. I can just take your car. No, that's different. Uh, that's in my name. Oh. Well, and that's the stipulation? Yeah. Uh-huh. It's mine. I bought it. If I leave a penny behind... Hmm. You don't get that? On to the wackadoodle news. Well, a cop was checking downtown businesses and found a 23-year-old Sean Foster charging his cell phones in an outlet hidden behind some flowers. They charged him with theft of services and carrying a concealed weapon after officers found a folded knife tucked under his shirt. That's hmm. ridiculous. I ain't never going there. Police say a polite New Jersey burglar offers to repair a screen in Vonnie, New Jersey. Authorities say a burglar offered to repair the screen that he damaged, breaking into a New Jersey home after he was confronted by the homeowners and told her he meant to break into a neighbor's home. Sorry, I'll fix your screen, though. Yeah. Right? The homeowner, Maria Cardona, tells the press in Atlantic City that the man made her nervous as he told her about his family and kept a hand in his pocket. She says he was really polite and nothing was stolen. So what was she scared of? He didn't mean to do it to her. He oh. was doing it to the neighbor. Cool. You know? Yeah. Fuck, it's an honest mistake. It Sorry, is. Sorry, wrong Some house. Some people pray. Sorry. Probably got the wrong address. Could happen. The heroin isn't in this Google's house. Google's not always right. Facebook is. Yeah, Facebook's always right. It must be it's true. Not, it's, that's it. Always. 
In Inglewood, Colorado, a 28-year-old guy was rescued, dusty but alive, after he was trapped nearly 15 hours in an air-conditioned event. Inglewood police say they responded to calls for help from the roof of an elementary school where they found a man trapped 30 feet down the vent. Firefighters had to cut open the vent to pull the man out. The Denver Post reports that the man told police he stole a friend's purse the night before and threw it on the roof. When he climbed on the roof to get it, he fell in the vent and got stuck. So, so lesson to be learned. Feet, if he was 30 feet in that vent, how many feet did they have to cut out to get to him? Oh no, I didn't see the vent. Well, that's not a very informative story because I want to know how many feet they had to cut out of that vent. No, I just want to let everybody know if you steal a purse, don't throw it on a roof. Throw it somewhere where you can find it the next day, like behind bushes. Like the guy that was plugging in the cell phone, he could have put it behind the bush, and then the next day he could have went so right what's back your, and So what's it. the message there with you? Don't throw it on a roof because then you got to climb an event to get it. don't steal a purse? Well, that too. But remember the guy died at Dennery's in the vent? It wasn't Dennery's. It Miller's? Was Bobman's. Bobman's. And he was dressing in Santa Claus. He was trying yeah. to rob it. I do remember that. Yeah, don't in go down In Albuquerque, vets. New Mexico, Anthony Garcia, 32, was indicted on charges of adultering food and making false statements to federal investigators. What was he, fucking the chicken or something? Read on. Okay. Garcia is accused in this three-page indictment of handing out tainted yogurt samples at a sunflower market in Albuquerque in January. Now that's funny because I witnessed like a good friend of mine when we were younger. He had a crush on this girl and they were making hot dogs. And she said, oh, can you get me a hot dog? And he said, yeah. And he, we go in the kitchen. He gets the hot dog roll one and he's like, shh. And he whipped out his dick and put it on a hot dog roll and squeezed it. And then got the hot dog and put it on. That's and so no disgusting. bullshit when the girl was eating it. She was like, this is the best hot dog I ever had in my life. I and think I know so who that had to be funny. too. That was funny. You're retarded, friend. <laughs> Officers responded to the store after a woman called to report an employee had given her what she was told was a yogurt sample. This is so disgusting. The woman told police she believed it was actually bodily fluid. Something about Mary, remember, hanging off the... Uh... Ew. Oh, you got some gel right here. I can never eat yogurt again, <laughs> ever. It was a sample. Gonzalez said his office will vigorously pursue anyone who deliberately taints food for the purpose of harming innocent customers, for malicious pranks or for deviant sexual, sexual gratification. The indictment said he falsely claimed to know, to, that the, not know. to not know that the spoon he handed the customer contained his semen. It was an accident. <laughs> Police said they tested the yogurt and found semen, then linked it to Garcia. Alterating means to make impure. No, it's not alterating, it's adulterating. And I swore you were gonna say, that's not a word, that's not a word. So I had to put in there with the word meant. Well, you were wrong. <laughs> See, I didn't say it. I'm surprised, because usually you always question it. Mm. No, I can honestly see that you just copied and pasted that because all the spelling was correct and everything as yeah, such. Yeah, exactly. As such. I'm so sick <laughs> of it as such. I'm like, where does that even come from? It doesn't even make sense when you use it. Anywho. Anywho. <laughs> this week's Kenzo Moments is continued from the question, how can you tell if someone is from Kensington? You're going to do, oh, you're still doing this? Yeah. Oh, okay, go. <laughs> Roxanne Goodwin Tansy says, when you call a stroller a coach, catch more than one wishy in a day. When you cut the grass with a weed whacker, get scared shitless the first time you heard a cicada in the burbs. She's right about all of it. Hmm. Bob Deck says, who had grass in Kensington? My yard was concrete, so was my pavement. Well, he says pavement, I say pavement. What do you say? Pavement. You say pavement? You don't pavement. Say pavement. I say pavement. Pavamente. The only grass, the only grass we grew, between, stop playing footsies with me. The only grass we grew, oh my God, you're so sweaty and disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> stop touching my thing. Oh, your thing down there? No, I have to touch your thing all the way up here. <laughs> Backed up in your belly button. Uh -huh. The only grass we had, we grew was between the cracks in the concrete blocks. Laugh out loud. Rita Rose Kohler said, I had artificial grass on my porch. Does that count? <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> A lot of people did. Yeah. And when your ice cream cone is rolled in jimmies, not sprinkles. I call them jimmies. Julie McDonald Hassan Colazzo, when you say zinc instead of sink. Crystal Bowen said, whenever I mention I'm from Kensington, when someone asks, their response is, oh, wow, you still have all your teeth. 
Also, Kenzos have thicker skin than most, meaning they rarely take anything offensive because they could give two shits. That's true. I don't give a shit what anybody says. Lily May L Lavasour Calazzo. Lily Lavasour? May Cal whatever. Lily May Calazzo. When they hit Hello, first Lily. and ask questions later. Tim Burke wrote, if you know what an itchy ball tree is, you call the fridge the icebox. Wait, that might just make me old. Yeah, because I didn't call it an icebox. No. I call it the fidge, fidgerator. That's what I had a speech impediment when you I was You still scared. do. Well, no, Richard Ed the Puna said, Kenzo shit in the public pools. That was you. It was. Yeah. I did it twice. I know. <laughs> laughing my and he laughs at himself. Laughing my ass off. He probably was at the computer. He he he! I shit in the pools. <laughs> oh my god! And as always, Kenzo girls got piles. What does that mean? You don't know what piles are? Yeah. Well, my mom used to always say, if you sit on a step too long, you'll get piles. But so that I'm... means that Kenzo girls sit on their ass and they get piles. Oh, so you you're know because Kenzo girl. girls have st got style to song. Yeah. I just changed it to Kensington Girls Got Piles. <laughs> Joseph Moreno said it's their stroll. Ain't that? That's Peppa. Peppa. Mm -hmm. I thought so. Yeah. Henry Strimmel said when you see the old school boxer tattoo on someone. Is that the old school one? Though? I guess. Danny Emery <sighs> said when they are eating a pizza pretzel, sipping an Arctic splash with a straw, of course and are strolling their neighborhood proudly and trying the best they can to make sure that they and all who they know are okay. That's the Kenzos I remember. And if you don't like it, go get, go get your fucking dad. Go get your fucking dad. <laughs> that is so true. I always said that. Sky Philip Brady wrote, played half C stick ball, wire ball, and box ball with a pimple ball, hung from roofs, played football in the streets, and yelled, heads up, when a car was coming. Snowballs from the Maryland Crab House, that's right, snuck on the 60 trolley through the side doors in the back, that's right. The Hucksters had horse and buggy. Not buggy. Horse and wagon. You tried to be best friends with the kid that had the wrench to the fire plug. Walked through the alleys on the way to the swimmo, tried to mac out with girls at the Saturday double feature at the Midway, and you forgot to put, write a song and sing a song, Kensington Girl. <laughs> he played with a lot of balls, didn't he? I don't know. Well, everything was a ball. Pimple ball, wall ball, football, snowballs. Snowballs, that's right. Forgot pocket ball. Damn, it's hot in here. This I'm man. melting. Tiffany Walker said, when you say act me instead of act me. My mom People says, say act, -a -me. act -a me. Yeah. yeah. Act me. Maybe she meant the A. Act me. Act me. Yeah, because I'm <coughs> act me. me. I'm feeling a little of a clap. Act me. Your mommy. Sucky, sucky now. Time for Family Fun Day. Join Platoon Fitness for a free outdoor fitness class on the plaza at the Comcast Center at 1701 JFK Boulevard. This is the Where's last that? one. Where's that, 17th and JFK? Yeah, that would be it. You're so smart sometimes, I wonder. This is the last one, so get the kids and go. Stop bitching that there's nothing to do. It's from 8.30 a.m. to 10.45 p.m. and it's free. Sensational Storytime Saturdays. Stories for young children by their favorite authors. Come for story time, snack, and play. Meet other children and play in the indoor playground. 16 South Letitia Street at Market. Starts at 10 a.m. For more information, call 267-639-3009. It runs every Saturday until September 3rd, and it's free. More free stuff. Presented by Fairmount Park Art Association at various locations, Museum Without Walls is an audio program for Philly's public art. Each audio program is told by a variety of people from all walks of life who are connected to the sculpture. Nearly 100 voices at 35 stops explore 51 sculptures along the Benjamin Franklin Parkway and Kelly Drive. Just use your cell phone, dial 215-399-9000, and the stop number located on the sign in front of the sculpture 
You can also pick up a free audio map at the Fairmount Park Welcome Center in Love Park or at any of the Parkway institutions. And it's free and ongoing. So it's every, every day. Well, I gotta, I gotta add something to that. You're telling them to stop in front of the statue and call a number while they're driving? No, Jackass, it's a walking tour. Oh. Oh my God. Or if you want to cool off. And it's not even illegal to be on the cell phone anymore. It's, it isn't? No, they didn't pass really? the law yet. Not anymore. Get that tissue out of the cup. And what? who said that? It's not a law in, in, in Pennsylvania. You can talk on the cell phone and text. They didn't pass the law. Wow, okay. Or if you want to cool off, go over the bridge for the day at Belmar Lake. It's cheap and fun for the whole fam. They have a slide, food, music in the lake. They got cigarette butts. Sometimes you see a condom floating by too. Take the Walden Bridge to exit 14 and jump in the cesspool. <laughs> You're so pessimistic. It's that so is fun the for dirtiest the fucking place How I've do ever seen. you know? Seen. When's the last time you were there? Um, probably eight years ago, and I would never go back there. Right. Well, maybe they did it. Did it? They cleaned it up. They maybe. threw chlorine in it. Oh. For Community Corner, there is a benefit being held at St. Martha's Parish Hall on Academy Road on Saturday, August 6th, 7 to 11. Five-year-old Sophia Pasqua Pasqu That's a shame. Just spell it. Just spell it. Sophia was diagnosed with leukemia in May. Please help with the cost of the treatments and provide her cost of living as she goes, undergoes extensive treatments to cure her cancer. All donations made go directly to Sophia's designated account and will be used for supporting her cure. Tickets are $30. You can call Maria at 609-458-1070. And if you cannot attend but would like to donate, you can email fightinforsophia at aol.com, which will be right there. the screen. Philly Food Bucks are coupons that help you save money on fruits and vegetables, but you must use your food stamp access card at one of the more than 20 participating farmers market in Philadelphia. You'll receive a $2 Philly Food Bucks coupon for every $5 you spend. Okay. Philly Food Bucks are also being handed out at WIC offices and health centers. One location is Green Grove's Farmer's Market at 2501 Cumberland Street. They're open Thursdays 2 to 7, Saturdays 10 to 3 p.m. For more information and locations, go to www.foodfitphilly.org. Can I borrow your access card? Well, you could probably go to Kensington and Somerset and buy them. Like they, you know, they'll sell their shit down there for like 30%. Access cards? Yeah. Oh, I have an idea. I'm going to start selling canes down at, at Kenston Somerset. All them junkies, it's so fucking crazy. Why do they carry canes? Because they won't fall. But if they hit their chin on the ground, I think that's when they die. Like, because I seen somebody at K&A, like literally that fucking close, blocking traffic in the middle of K&A. His chin was that close, he was dipping that low, and he popped right up and just was like, wow. I was like, wow. A walker would be better for them, but I only have one No, of but you can't strap that two rubber bands around your back. Oh, yeah. See that? But I was trying do. to think, what do they need down there? What is it that they really need? And I think canes. That's I can make a lot of money. And they always have money. And they have more them, money than anybody so else. So you could they, be down there instead of saying, works, 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 like, works, 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 works. You just say, canes, 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 canes. Yeah, I'm doing it. And I'll get like different ones, like you could make them higher or lower. The you know adjustable I mean? ones. Yeah, adjustable canes, because some people are taller, some people dip mm. more. You know right. what I mean? I think it's a good. Have thing. one with like a shock, you know, so that as you're dipping, it goes down with you slowly. And they could like unscrew the bottom, and it'd be like their little hiding spot. That's probably already done. Yeah, I have so many ideas of things. I'm just of I'm illegal an innovator. things. Is that illegal? Uh, yeah, well, drug, drug use and sales. I didn't say hide drugs in it. I said hide their stuff. Well, what the fuck would they hide in there? Their clothes. I don't know. Uh -huh. <laughs> PCA Heatline is a call center that you can call for tips on how to stay safe in the heat. They are trained counselors and health department nurses to answer questions about medical problems related to the heat and dispatch a mobile relief team if necessary. This is a non-emergency service, and it's not a fan or air conditioning distribution site, but they can give you information on where to get those services. And locations along with services for seniors year-round. The, the number, number is 215-765-9040. And please don't forget to check on your elderly neighbors and family and friends. Older people cannot handle the heat as well as younger people, so... They could ultimately die as a result, so. Meals on Wheels is having a hard time getting food delivered to its recipients due to the rise in gas prices. 
The elderly who depend on these meals are suffering and some starving due to the declining volunteers. If you can spare even an hour a week to help deliver, please go to www.mowaa.org or call your local program. And the number is 215-464-2224. That's on Townsend Road. And that's all we have for you this week, I guess. That's all we have. Gotta go. It's hot as a motherfucker. It is so hot. We're starting. Bye. Stay cool, people. Live, love, laugh. Ignite my song. Bring my posse along to the party. Could change the zone. From the heart is in effect. So I see buddy study. Think and learn. Dig the move we made. Stunning those that just can't behave. Discipline. Here's a hand. It's cool from the damn hand. Too tough. All up in you with the family.